Hello, good afternoon. Welcome everybody to Ferris Global Live at 5. It is 5 o'clock again on Tuesday. Can you guys believe it? My name is Brian Hartman and I am coming to you live from Ferris Plaza headquarters at 1859 Southeast Port St. Lucie Boulevard in Port St. Lucie, Florida. A beautiful day out there today. Uh, we're getting into the springtime already. Yesterday was the first day of spring. Can't believe it. Um, looking forward to uh, seeing everybody tonight. We've got a great show. Episode number 43 with Joshua Espinal of Blind Fire Gunworks. I'm excited to hear about it. Um, we are Ferris Global. You can find us at ferrisglobal.com. We're, we're an ecosystem of businesses put together to help business owners, medical practices, dental practices, real estate investment firms be able to scale, grow, and eventually reach an exit. We do financial management, bookkeeping, marketing services. We do HR services, payroll, PEO, exit planning strategy, commercial, residential, mortgage brokerage companies, we have a real estate firm doing uh, residential and commercial real estate, insurance company doing personal and commercial lines of insurance, medical practice management doing billing coding credentialing for medical and dental practices, and full on IT services. We get you up and running and keep you up and running. Um, so you can find us at ferrisglobal.com. We are excited to help you. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about overcoming blindness through the construction of firearms. Yes, you heard that right. I couldn't believe it when I heard this, and I, I was excited to get Joshua on. I couldn't wait to get him on the show, and I can't wait to hear more about his background. And without further ado, let's all welcome Joshua Espinal to the show. Welcome, Joshua. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Awesome. I am doing awesome. I love that New York accent, even though you're not from New York originally, but it certainly sounds that way. So yeah, kind of, <laughs> kind of, sort of. Welcome. Yeah. Glad you can make it on the show, my friend. Thank you. Um, so I know I've been waiting to hear more about your background and, and, um, um, uh, where you where you came from, how you got to where you are today, and and uh, tell us tell us a little bit about all of that and how you got started in Blind Fire Gunworks. Well, um, originally I'm from the United States Virgin Islands, so shout out to my people from the VI. Hope everybody's yeah. staying blessed and staying safe. Um, went to high school there, graduated there, uh, joined the army right afterwards when I turned 17. My parents had to sign for me. Um, went to Fort Knox, Kentucky, became a 19 kilo, which is the tanker. And uh, how I missed that job, because I got to shoot one of the largest weapons on the planet, that 120 millimeter, which is an amazing cannon, which pound for pound, we still have the best tanks in the world, bar none. Um, did six years there, served um, two tours in Iraq, two tours in Afghanistan, um, came out then joined law enforcement uh, down in the Virgin Islands, worked in corrections as well as uh, VIPD. Then from there, I came up to uh, Florida where I studied motorcycle mechanics. And from there, I joined um, another college where I got hired with one of the sheriff's offices in, in near Orlando, which is um, Orange County. Uh, during that time, I was going through the process of what was called uh, retinal detachments. Um, so I lost my eyesight due to that. Uh, from there, I actually went back home for about a year when I went blind, trying to figure out what I was going to do and then, you know, not giving up because the Army always taught us, you know, never quit, never accept defeat. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I ventured out to, to find out services on how to live as a blind individual. And I discovered the um, the blind center, which is the rehabilitation center here in Daytona Beach. Mm. So spent about six months in there learning how to live as a blind individual. And during that process, I realized that all those army ethos and skills, you know, 
stuck with me and that added that positive attitude to to keep pushing wow. you know got me into a new level and in that process um the late great peter cirillo who was my mentor there actually got me an interview with at the time the the police chief of daytona beach uh mr chief chitwood now currently the sheriff so he sat me down he interviewed me and i got hired on the spot right there That's um, awesome. Oh yeah, I love that job. Um, during that process, I worked in different divisions, including robbery, homicide, uh, persons, also right. property crime. And eventually, because I always had a, a passion for firearms, I was sent to the Glock certification school uh, to become an armor. Wow. And with, with that process, we found out that I became the first blind person in the world to be certified as an armorer. And I got a letter from Gaston Glock himself stating that, which was an amazing feat. Wow. And yep. And then right after that, I started learning about the AR-15, which of course in the service was the M4 and the M16. And I'm a little bit of experience, you know, with basic cleaning and maintenance. That took me to a whole new level. And I've studied the history of the weapon you know, how it started, where it ended up, and how great the weapon platform is. And of course, I speak highly of it because it is my favorite um, rifle on the planet, America's rifle. So I took those skills and opened up Blind Fire Gunworks. That is so cool. What a story. And thank you for your service. We, we appreciate that. Uh, Christina Miller is my girlfriend. She says, thank you for your service, Joshua. Thank you. Uh, Pete Previtt uh, is our general manager. He's watching and he said, what an incredible story. Thank you for serving. And um, and he also wanted me to mention that we also do investment banking. I forgot to mention that earlier. So <laughs> threw that in there, Pete. Thank you for that. Thank you guys for watching. Um, Joshua, amazing story, man. It, it's incredible. Um, you know, it, it really gives people, I know it give, it's given me the extra push to want to do more. Uh, so I could imagine that there's a lot of people watching that feel the same way. So thank you for all of that. Thank you, sir. If it's okay with you, I'd like to go back and dive a little bit deeper because you gave, you threw out a lot of meat and potatoes, but let's get into the details of it, if that's all right. Yes, sir. So I know you start, you mentioned about retinal detachments. Um, how what what all took place and and what was it like what and uh, how did you how did you wind up being in that position well two things started causing it according to um medical examinations when i got out of the army i was still seeing okay but started to have uh, vision issues you know i thought it was just like the normal aging process you know mm -hmm. and this is me around in my in my late 20s um the the doctor, when I went to start checking my eyes, he says, you're having problems with your retina. He asked me if I was diabetic. I said at the time, no, I don't think so. So he recommended me to go to see a, a, a primary care. Went to the primary care, found out, yes, I was diabetic. And the combination, according to the doctor, of firing um, the 120 millimeter, because I basically was the driver, I was the shortest guy in, in, in my team. Mm. unit so i drove when that cannon went over my head apparently um without me knowing that i was diabetic during that time it, it was starting to detach my retinas wow so eventually the combination of that and the diabetes uh, accelerated what's called diabetic retinopathy which right. uh, that's when your blood vessels inside your retina starts bleeding mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you start seeing these spots and eventually it detaches the retina Wow. I, um, I know a lot about that, unfortunately, because my mom was diabetic, um, since the age of 14 and she kind of went through, she had to go through laser treatments for our eyes and yes. things like that. And, um, yeah. So, wow. That's, uh, that must've been a very difficult time. Um, yeah. for the first year it was, you know, I got into a, a pretty dark place. Like, I didn't want to get out. I felt depressed. You know, I didn't know what to do because I was always a go-getter. Right. You know, and it hit me, you know, yeah, let, let, 
you gotta get out of this, you know? Right. You've been in worse situation and you can push through this. So I did that. It's awesome. Very inspiring. Um, Al, Al Manillo is watching us as well, and he gives a thumbs up to the show. Thanks, Al, for watching. Appreciate that. Um, good story, man, Joshua. I appreciate you sharing that with us. Um, what what encouraged you the most to get into firearms? I know that you, uh, during your tours, you know, you were involved with it, but what was it that encouraged you the most? Well, starting to go back um, with the firearms in the military, you know, at the time we were using M4s and um, M9s, which is known as the Beretta 92 FS, great weapons platforms. And I started like enjoying them. You know, I got really good at shooting with it, you know, and I just wanted to learn more. Right. Now, using my GI Bill, instead of going to like a, a gunsmithing school, I actually went to a motorcycle mechanic school where I, I, you know, I had a passion for bikes too. And I worked on sport bikes for a little bit, trying to better my skills. When I lost the eyesight, I could still run through all the mechanics of taking down a, a ZX-10 engine and putting it together again. Wow. You know, the only thing I knew I could not do was the electrical work because those are color coded. Right. But all the mechanical stuff was easy to remember. You know, I can take off the headers, I can take out the valves, I can take out the pistons, the piston rods, the the camshaft, I can take out the the gears, all of that, the the, the wishbones and the the uh, sh uh, shifter drum. I I could do all of that. And I started putting two and two together because I'm always thinking and, and listening to audiobooks and stuff like that. And I said, well, you like guns so much, why not try and do it, hmm. you know? And when I was in the police department, after like three years, I talked to, uh, at the time was now Chief Capri, who just retired, I believe last year. He, he I suggested to him and I asked him, and he sent me to the Glock Armor School. And I actually graduated number one in that course. Wow. You know, I had the shortest um, takedown and, and, and rebuild of the, of the Glock pistol, as well I scored the highest score in that class on the, on the written exam. Now, of course, the instructor had to read out the questions and I would give him the answers. Wow. That's unbelievable. Edward Smith is watching and he just went, wow. He's from, uh, he's watching from LinkedIn and, uh, it, this is impressive, man. This is really unbelievable. So you went from remembering how to build and rebuild and take apart and rebuild an engine to wanting to see if you can do that in firearms. Yes. And you wound up actually going to school to learn how to do that after, yes. after you had already lost your sight. Yes. Incredible. So during uh, school is when you – gained a lot of the knowledge about the different weapon platforms? Well, um, before I went to the school, I would study all types of weapons, you know, the history, which I believe is very important. When you understand the history of something, you understand its value. You know, something that that a lot of schools don't teach anymore, which is history. Right. Know, the importance of that history. You know, how things went from one point to another and the improvements as time goes by. Mm -hmm. So that guided me through through learning about the weapons platform. And that's when I got into the AR-15, like its history, as well as the Glock pistol, which is still America's number one pistol, although they're a little bit being competed by, by Sig Sauer with their new P320 with the M17 and M18 platforms. But um, the Glock pistol, when I got my hands on it, and by the way, being blind, I've owned a, a good chunk of them. Mm. And um, it's just a simple pistol platform. And yes, I'm a Glock fan, but I like to call myself a Glock tart. Um, <laughs> just because it is, out of all the pistols on the planet, it is the most simplest. You know how they say Occam's razor, or keep it simple, stupid, you know? Yeah. So you have the least amount of issues with that pistol versus some of the other ones, you know? Um during that school with one tool, I managed to take the Glock apart 
to bear our metal and plastic and then put it back together. And it, it was just so simple. Wow. Yeah. Unreal. Um, Edward Smith says, as a former probation officer, that is incredibly impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Edward. Um, very interesting stuff. So, so tell us a little bit about Blind Fire Gunworks. What what's the focus of it? When did it start? And and uh, you know what what was the thought process behind it? So, <clears throat> excuse me. Blind Fire Gunworks, right? The name actually came because of my wife. My wife, who who's my biggest supporter as well as my daughter, my my four and about to be five. Um, she came up with the name. You know, and because she knows that I love the the, the sport of shooting, mm -hmm. um, that's what started the idea. Knowing that I love firearms so much and I love mechanics and things like that, so that's how that was born. Now, the purpose of Black Fire Gunworks. If you look at a lot of manufacturers out there, you get you see some ARs costing maybe like what at the cheap end six seven hundred dollars. But at the high end, it can go all the way up to three thousand mm -hmm. dollars. One thing in common with those is that it's just a plain Jane AR. Yeah, it may have a fancy carbon fiber barrel, or it may have a nice trigger. But the most important essential parts of the weapon platform is that it's missing iron sights. You can't shoot if you can't really point at the right direction or right. aim it the right way. Sure. You know, comes with one magazine and a cardboard box. Mm -hmm. Well, we beg to differ with that. You know, even at, at our base model of our AR-15, which usually we sell those at $7.99, you're getting iron sights, which are metal, not plastic. Mm -hmm. We give you an extra magazine. So instead of one, you get two. And you also get a, a hard case, a plain old hard case. You know, and not just that, all our parts are sourced here in America, nothing Chinese. Now, awesome. No offense to the Chinese, you know, great people, sure. Sure. Um, you know, except the, I'm not going to get to the political side of it, but we're all human beings. And I always believe that we all have the right to defend ourselves with the proper tools. Absolutely. So I get my barrels from Ballistic Advantage, one of the greatest um, barrel companies, manufacturers here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, our receivers are made here in the U.S. Our forgings come from one of the three major um, forging houses, aluminum forging houses, you know, our triggers, all American made, everything is made in America, which oh. we, we love. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very cool. Very cool. Sorry. Um, before we, uh, continue just for everybody out there, if you have any questions or comments for Joshua, uh, please drop them in the comment section whether you're on LinkedIn or Facebook or YouTube and we'll be happy to ask those questions to Joshua and um, get some answers and um, Joshua did you want to uh, tell everybody about the specials that you you're uh, providing today oh definitely uh, between now and all the way till the ending of April we want to offer to the viewers a very special um, product for example, our AR-15, that the $7.99 bottle, right? If you purchase that weapon platform from us, we're going to include a free red dot that's valued at $200. Wow. Nice optic, amazing optic. Um, yeah. If you buy the $9.99 model, that one will come with a total, which normally comes with only two mags. We're going to include five more mags. You have a, a combat load of magazines, which would be a total of seven mags. Okay. So we're throwing we're throwing that out for the viewers, for those who are interested. And it helps promote our company. And the best thing about all our rifles, they have a lifetime warranty on it. Okay. So if anything happens to the weapon itself, no problems, we will fix it immediately. Wow. Huge As opportunity, guys. If you're listening, take advantage. Those are great specials. Thank you for doing that, Joshua. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Um, we have a, a friend of ours. Um, his name is Jordan, Jordan Young. I believe he's a client of yours too. Mm -hmm. Um, we, 
Well, I, he actually did a did us a big favor uh, last year and got us a a law enforcement contract overseas. Wow. And we sent a hundred rifles to a French law enforcement agency over there. So, and they love the rifles. So our, we know we got good quality rifles when a law enforcement agency loves the weapon. Very, very cool. Um, while I'm thinking of it, would it help to have an introduction to an ammunition company? Um, yeah, it would be great. You know, um, there's tons of companies out there. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to ammunition and each has their favorites um, for an AR-15 for defense, I like to use 55 grain, um, 5.56 or even 223s if you cannot get 5.56s. Um, for another good round for, for home defense, which I do recommend too, is the, um, what's that company? Uh, Oh, I, I just drew a blank on the company, but they make the Mark 262, which is a 77 grain OTM bullet. Um, it's Black Hills, Black Hills ammunition. It is up there in price, but that round with a, a very special rifle uh, known as the Mark 12 has been recognized by um, the military circles for actually taking out a lot of Taliban soldiers at 800 meters, which is impressive for a 5.56. Five, wow. You know, and, and we actually construct a version of that gun. Nice. Um, it's, it's our Mark 12 clone, and that gun comes with everything that you need. You know, like I said, we like to give our customer with our weapons flat platforms everything that they want, you know, and they would need from the basics all the way to a fully decked out rifle. As a matter of fact, um, I have one behind me that I just finished constructing for a, a customer. Um, I, right. If you want, I can show it to you real quick. That would be right. great. Yeah. Let everybody see. Yep. Yeah. So this is our LR-308 long distance shooter. Nice. Um, so that's actually a thousand meter gun. Uh, comes with ambidextrous charging handle extended. Luthe R buttstock. That one also has a fat defense uh, gratis pistol grip, a uh, two stage trigger by Centurion, which also makes a Mark 12. <clears throat> has an 18 inch uh, chrome molly vanadium, one in 10 inch twist barrel, 15 inch handguard, and our very own um, BFGW dissipator muzzle brake, and a quick beat touch uh, bipod. The scope is actually a primary arms gold series GLX, uh, four to sixteen by fifty power scope, which is an amazing optic, and we all we all build these guns just like that. So depending on what the customer would like, we can work around that. That's so we take we take a lot of pride in our work. Absolutely, that's great, man. Looks really good. Um, Two, two more comments. Edward Smith says U.S. parts are better quality. Um, that goes back to what you were talking about earlier. And then he said, I might have missed So with U.S. parts. No. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. So with U.S. parts, I do believe it is better quality, except if there are some exceptions. There's always an exception to the rule. Um, for example, the, the Cold Hammer Forge on the HK platforms, like the 416s, great barrels, but one problem. We can't import those, those barrels here mm -hmm. uh, due to certain uh, laws, federal laws, during, um, during back in the 80s when, when uh, Bush Sr., he banned certain importations of parts. Um, we do have companies here that make excellent Cold Hammer Forge barrels, for example, FN. Mm -hmm. um i believe uh centurion also does which we use some of their barrels uh ballistic advantage that's button cut but great accurate barrel um so yeah i i still do believe that parts made in america especially because we have better quality control here than certain other countries outside of the u.s you know it gives you a, a better quality gun mm -hmm. you know and plus it being built in america means that it employs people here and we're not sending money overseas for parts. Right, makes sense. Yep. Yeah, home built, as I like to say. Yep, 
Um, he also mentioned, he may have missed this in the beginning, uh, but where is your shop located? So we're located in Lake Mary, Florida. Awesome. Yeah. So basically Central Florida, north of Sanford and north of Orlando. Got it. Um, the ammunition company that I'm referring to, I'll, I'll try to make that connection for you, but they developed a polymer casing for the ammunition that makes it much lighter, and they work uh, quite a bit with the military as a result of that for transportation. Yes. I, I believe one of them is Six Sour, and there's another company with, uh, I believe with Fairchild, I think it is. Um, they were doing it for their um, their new M MGE uh, program mm. for, the, uh, for the US military. Uh, I'm I'm on top of that because I'm very excited to see that that caliber and, and that new um, round, yeah. which is supposed to be a six point eight by fifty one style um, caliber. Nice, awesome. A um, lot lot of different types of firearms out there, Joshua. But what's your favorite? My favorite for rifles, I will always stay with the AR fifteen. Okay, you know, very easy to to deal with very low maintenance you know uh very modular mm -hmm. as far as handguns i i'm sorry i have to stay with the glock because it's just so simple it's been around for since the 80s mm -hmm. it's gone through five different generations a lot of people like to call it a one trick pony but it's like that saying if it's not broken why why fix it yeah you know so great platforms um in terms of uh, pistol caliber carbines, there's one I've always wanted to get my hands on one, but they're very, very expensive. And I would have to say would be a, a MP5 if I could ever own one. <laughs> gotcha. Cool. Um, so uh, I guess I'm interested in learning about where are things headed with Blind Fire Gunworks? What do you see in the future? Well, we're hoping for our company to grow uh, bigger and still maintain the same quality control to push out the best weapons platform for the civilian, the common man, as well as a military and law enforcement. You know, we want to give that customer something that they could depend their lives on. It, it God forbid, a situation that they need to use that weapon, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Blind fire goers, it being veteran owned and family owned, you know, we want it to, to, to share out to people and let them know that you buy one of our, our weapons, you're part of our family, and we take care of family. That's awesome. You know? That that is so not the common way of business anymore, and it's so good to hear that there there is still businesses doing that. So thank you for that. Yes, sir. Um, Edward Edward said he loves his Glock too, and he says <laughs> he says I own an MP5 clone that was my favorite gun even more than the Glock. Oh yeah, I'm a big fan of that weapons. I shot it once in my life, actually a full auto one. I've been always wanting to get one, but we can't have the full auto right now. But hopefully one day we will. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so we covered a lot of ground, Joshua. Uh, before we go to closing, is there anything that we didn't touch that you might want to mention out there? Yeah, um, again, we have those specials going on for uh, the seven ninety nine model. You purchase yeah. that, you get a free two hundred dollar, excuse me, red dot. As well as for the nine ninety nine model, you get a full combat uh, load of magazines, which is a total of seven. And you can find us at blindfireusa.com. Again, that's blindfireusa.com. And check out our website. And if you guys have any questions, we have our contact information there. Please don't hesitate to give us a call, if anything. Awesome. So it's Joshua Espinal. It's, it's pronounced Zangitsu, Zangitsu Jitsu at gmail.com. And the phone number is 386 402 seven five four zero um yep, this yep. will be 
This will be on replay uh, for quite some time and on our YouTube channel for, at Ferris Global. So you can get all this good information back again. Um, Edward says, you know what, Joshua, I would love to see you grow. We should connect on LinkedIn. So uh, okay. I think, think, you, think you got a, a good connection there through the show, Joshua. So I'll make sure that that happens with you guys. Yes, sir. Also, um, the other business email is info at blindfireusa.com. Awesome. That's, that's probably easier for yes. everybody to remember. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I really appreciate you being on. I learned a lot. I knew I was going to get a, a ton of information. Thank you for uh, sharing all of that with us. Yes, sir. Thank you. And for those of you out there, if you'd like to appear on our podcast live at five every Tuesday night, just reach out to us. You could find us at ferrisglobal.com. We'd love to get some more information out there about your business. And uh, we appreciate everybody watching tonight. Joshua, thank you very much again for being with us. Yes, sir. Every everybody have a great night and we will see you on the next live at five. Good night, everybody. Good night.